Hello there, this is Ben Crosland with another guest review for Sonic State. This time they've asked me to take a look at Phobos, which is a software instrument designed in a collaboration between BT and Spitfire Audio. By the way, that's BT, the well-known American producer and composer of electronic music and film scores, not British Telecom, in case you were wondering. And Spitfire Audio, if you didn't already know, are a British company that have earned themselves quite the reputation in recent years for their excellent sample libraries. So the name Phobos originates from the ancient Greek god of fear, and it's also one of the moons of Saturn, which both seem appropriate given the concept of this instrument, which is to create eerie soundscapes and tense atmospheres for use in films, etc. And at the time of review, this instrument is priced at £249 sterling. It features a frighteningly large library of nearly 2,400 loops and waveforms created and sampled entirely by BT, and a convolution synthesis engine, which I'll explain later. And it ships with over 700 presets. So I'm not going to be going through every single parameter in excruciating detail in this review, as Spitfire have already provided plenty of tutorial videos on their website, and you can always download and read the manual. I'm just going to be giving my overall impressions of the instrument, play you a few sounds, including some I've made myself along the way, and whinge a bit about some of the things I'm not so keen on. Here's a nice oceanic ambience by Paul Thompson called um, Blinded Droid. So what's the basic concept of the sound engine? Well, on the face of it, it's pretty simple. We've got four source modules at the top, labelled 1 to 4, and we've got three convolvers along here, labelled W, X and Y. And you can load any of the waveforms into the source modules, and you can load any of the waveforms into the convolver modules. To do so, you click on the waveform like that, and uh, choose from the big list, or you can type into the search bar if you know the name of the one you're looking for. You can choose by key, by tempo, or you can narrow down the list by uh, selecting uh, various tags for characteristics. So basically you're playing a sample and you're resonating it through the impulse response of another sample. So, for example, you could have an analog synth wave resonating through the impulse response of a drum loop, or vice versa. Um, and then you can map it to uh, any zone on the keyboard you like. You can layer or split, just using these little handles down here. And you can set up complex performances to play in real time if you wish. And if it's a harmonic sample, i.e. one that sounds pitched, it'll be automatically pitched across the keyboard, not just in the sample modules, but by the convolvers as well, which is rather like playing reverb as a musical instrument. So here's a nice preset by BT. It's, uh, I think it might be the least foreboding preset I've found so far, uh, and even then it sounds like a scene in which the protagonist quietly surveys the aftermath of some terrible apocalypse. <laughs> So I've set up a relatively simple patch that I hope will give you a good idea of what it's about. So in source 1 I've chosen a drum loop and I've assigned it to a range of specifically one key here. I'm going to play that key now and latch it with my sostenuto pedal. So now I'm dialing down the dry mix all the way, uh, but the drum loop is still playing. Now if I play a chord higher up on the keyboard, it'll trigger the convolvers which are all assigned to the upper range here. So 
So at the moment I've positioned the source 1 triangle so that it only excites convolver W. As I want to show you the effect that changing the convolver waveform has on the texture of the sound. So for that I'm going to use the random button here and just select a few different waves. <laughs> So as you can hear, this is a powerful and fairly versatile method of sound design, uh, especially as there's a lot you can do to alter the characteristics of the uh, convolver waveform, which I'll get into later. And the central piece of the user interface is the convolvers triangle, where you move uh, the smaller triangles it contains within the three-point vector. And this allows you to mix in real time the balance of the three convolvers for each of the four source waves. So I've set up the other two convolvers with some different uh, waveforms and have a listen to what happens as I move the triangle around. So it's a simple enough concept and it's effective, but it can be a little frustrating in use uh, because as you can see, Despite the fact that source number one is the only source that has anything loaded into it right now, all four source triangles are still visible in the convolver. Uh, really, I feel it would make more sense if the only ones uh, that appeared here were those that actually had a waveform loaded in, uh, especially as you know they clutter things up and it's easy enough to uh, grab the wrong triangle because they can overlay each other very closely. In fact, they can completely obscure each other. Uh, and I wouldn't mind some more clues as uh, to whether the convolver was actually doing anything because you'll find that many of the presets don't make use of it at all and you're grabbing the triangles and yanking them around and absolutely nothing happens to the sound. Speaking of presets, if you're the kind of user who likes to use them then I don't think Phobos will disappoint. As I mentioned earlier it ships with more than 700 at the moment and they're conveniently sorted by creator and category. You can find them down here. And I think they sound consistently good. We've got many by uh, BT himself. We've also got some by Christian Henson, Paul Thompson and Richard Devine. And there's several made by the Spitfire audio team themselves. And here's one to rattle your subwoofers. This is by Christian Henson. Uh, enormous drone. So those of you who like to roll your own, like I do, will no doubt be itching to see what manner of toys have been provided for such purposes. Each source and convolver has its own set of synth parameters and dedicated mod matrix. And in the main window you can adjust the more commonly used ones, such as the amp envelope and the wet-dry levels. And there's also a high-pass filter for every module. Uh, and this is very important because it is very easy to generate some uh, quite terrifying levels of sub bass. So trust me, you're going to want to know where that one is. If you want to get a little bit more detailed, click on the Edit menu button there and you'll see all of the parameters available. So in this section here, we have the amp envelope controls with a couple more as well. Uh, we've got a hold parameter and a curve. In this section, we can start messing with the waveform itself. And this is probably the uh, most fun bit. You can uh, adjust the speed and or the pitch. And if you select the time slash pitch mode, uh, you can adjust them independently. However, it has to be mentioned that this comes at a pretty significant cost uh, on your CPU. So unless you're running this on a very powerful machine, don't expect too much in the way of polyphony if you uh, run this mode, especially on more than a couple of modules. Over here, you can adjust the start offset of the waveform. And there's a very useful quantize setting for this, which allows you to create rhythmically precise offsets for drum loops. 
Here we have a pair of filters. We've got uh, a resonant high pass and a resonant low pass. And down here we've got a gate, which is actually pretty fun. Uh, I'm going to play uh, the loop and I'm going to adjust firstly the high gate down and then the low gate up. So I think that could be pretty useful actually. So let's take a look at the modulation capabilities. So Spitfire call these uh, mappings. If you open that window you can see what we've got currently assigned. You can remove uh, any of these with the uh, minus button here. You can add extra ones with the plus button. Um, to change the ones that we've got select on the modulation source and choose from the list. You can see we've got four LFOs. Uh, sadly only one envelope which uh, seems to be the uh, amplitude envelope of the current module. Um, and then you choose the destination parameter from this list which is basically any parameter um, available for that module. Uh, then you have to fiddle with these to set the minimum and maximum range and then the curve um, etc. It's, it's all a bit fiddly. I really I would have liked to have seen a bipolar depth control as is standard by now and also the option to uh, control uh, the depth of uh, this modulation routing here via another one. So for example, to if I set up this LFO, I want to be able to control the depth of that maybe by something like uh, the mod wheel or aftertouch or something. You can't do that. Uh, there are some presets. Uh, this is useful, but there's no way to save your own. Uh, I think this is a big oversight because uh, it is, like I say, it's fiddly and there are many that you want to use uh, very frequently, such as uh, modulation wheel to uh, cut off, uh, high pass cut off particularly. It, nearly all of the presets seem to use that and yet there's no preset for it so I think there's a bit of a trick missed there. So let's take a quick look at the LFO section. You find it down here. Uh, weirdly they default to off uh, which means you first got to select your waveform otherwise you won't hear anything happen at all um, and also the rate and scale uh, parameter is a little bit uh, takes a bit of getting used to shall we say. Uh, you set the uh, quantized value here and uh, then if you turn it higher it actually goes slower because it's a multiple of that value so at the moment we've got 3.406 quarter notes uh, and to go faster you um, turn it down which takes a little getting used to but it you know it works. Uh, sadly there's no envelope or one shot mode which I would have liked especially because uh, as I mentioned before we've only got the one envelope to uh, available to the mod matrix. And here's a nice tension builder by Richard Devine that shows what you can do when you split the keyboard and build up layers. It's called Grave Rail. So I'm running this on a late 2012 Mac Mini i7 which runs at 2.3 GHz and to be honest this feels like bare minimum spec. I can only really use Phobos if it's the only instrument in the project and even then patches that use the more exotic features like the convolvers afford me little more than two or three notes polyphony before things start choking up. I guess given that it's aimed at score composers that this won't present such an issue to the majority of its potential users, but you really need to take this into account if you're not running the latest and greatest hardware, especially if you like to run big complex projects with multiple instruments and effects plugins. But having said all that, I actually really like it. Um, between them, BT and Spitfire have produced a highly credible instrument in Phobos. Um, having watched a couple of films since I've been using it, I found myself hearing parts of the soundtrack and thinking, yeah, Phobos could do that straight out of the box. So if you're working in the soundtrack industry, I'd suggest that this is a no-brainer for you. If you're into making dark industrial stuff, then it's probably for you as well. Um, and I, I think I like it because it you know what you're going to get from it. It's got a very distinctive character and sound to it. Uh, it's not like one of those multi-cuisine buffets where you kind of end up with a bit of Thai and a bit of Chinese and a bit of Indian, a bit of Greek all on the same plate. Uh, this is about making dark, eerie, tense soundscapes uh, and it does that very very well. 
Uh, just make sure you've got a machine that can make the most of it, I would say. So thank you for watching. I'm going to play myself out now with a few of the sounds that I've been making uh, during the course of this review. Uh, if you need any more information on Phobos, just follow the link at the end.